yeah. one thing that came out, um, I want to move on to our mm-hmm. next part of the trials. Because, like we said, there was a lot of dirty laundry that was kind of aired out um, yeah. in this court case. And the biggest one, I, in my opinion, has to be the fact that we got more input on the cross-play deal that Epic made with Sony. So we, we learned mm-hmm. more about that deal. And we actually learned that Epic pretty much paid <laughs> more to Sony so that Fortnite could be offered crossplay on um, PS4. This was shocking to me. Anyone else? Like, I've never heard of a publisher paying more in, like, I never thought that was an actual thing. Yes. Uh, blanket statement, <laughs> yes. <laughs> a little shocking, but then you just, you pull back the layer, just like, even just like the first layer back, and you're like, oh, it makes sense. Like, it's, it's really not that surprising because, you know, PlayStation is all about making sure PlayStation benefits. And that's exactly what you kind of see uh, with all the evidence that kind of came out of this trial is that PlayStation's number one concern was how do we benefit the PlayStation community? Yep. And that was that was first and foremost. And yeah, that's kind of what we saw here uh, kind of unfold is that Epic kind of had to negotiate the terms in ter- and even to go as far as to say like hey we're willing to make you guys the hero here and make you guys look good and they still weren't going to have it unless it hit their bottom line and yeah base value yeah it is kind of surprising but at the same time i was like yeah it's it's business at the end of the day this is this is in my opinion like a prime example of all those conversations we always have where it's like man it would be so cool to be a fly on the wall during this conversation (laughs) this conversation and we're actually seeing it come to 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 light here um but yeah i can't imagine sony was very happy with with this coming out in the in the trial but they they put a request to get it heroes right now well (laughs) they put a request to actually get that those documents um, that revealed mm-hmm. this removed and it was actually removed um, yeah. from, uh, you know, for confidentiality mm-hmm. because they didn't want the public to really get their hands on it. The thing is, the Internet works really fast. So yeah. it's still out Crazy. there, um, yeah. which is it just blows my mind because I feel, look, I think back to when uh, Fortnite announced crossplay on PlayStation and mm-hmm. how much of a big deal that was and the conversations around that time was the fact that playstation's making the right move to have gaming more accessible for everyone and the idea Mm -hmm. of being the hero was truly there in every conversation i had and you know i heard people have about that deal well you have to remember that came after I think six months of people being like, Sony, what yeah. are you doing? Because that was, that's exactly what happened at E3. I think it was 2018 when they announced that it was Fortnite was coming to Switch and that there would be crossplay with Xbox, Xbox, PC, and Switch. And everyone was like, well, what about Sony? And Sony yeah. was like, no, we're not doing it. <laughs> and, and I remember, I mean, this even goes beyond that. This predates when Epic accidentally, quote unquote, turned on crossplay yep. in, uh, in Fortnite and showed essentially how easy it is and then I, I don't know if it was then or if it was after the fact when Xbox kind of just said, hey, we're down. Like, mm-hmm. we can do crossplay. We're just waiting for PlayStation to give us an answer. And they're the ones who are saying no. So it's been like there's been this extended period of time where people are like, yo, we let's play. Let's just give us crossplay. Like, no, it's not going to take anybody away from PlayStation. Anybody who's got Fortnite on PlayStation is still going to play it there. Anybody who's got Fortnite on Xbox, PC, or Nintendo Switch is going to be playing Fortnite there. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be playing Fortnite anywhere else. So whatever profits you're going to make is maybe going to come from the store, which is, I guess, what they kind of ended up negotiating. Um, But it was always that conversation of, PlayStation, what are you doing? Let's just implement crossplay and get this over with. If I'm going to be able to play with people on the Switch and the PC while I'm on Xbox or vice versa, then where's the PlayStation getting involved here? And then finally, when they did, yes, the conversation did become... Okay, great. PlayStation's made the great move. They finally implemented crossplay. Mm-hmm. Like this is it. We have this massive ecosystem now. And then other games started to implement it. Games like Rocket League and all that fun stuff. So it, like it just became this huge deal. Um, but there was a time where everyone was just sitting and waiting while PlayStation just kind of refused to implement crossplay. And now we kind of had the answer as to why. Why? And the yeah, thing yeah. is yeah. too, and- like I think. Sorry, Malik, I'm going to let you go in just a minute. But I think it was just to add to Steve's point, 
Yes, it was after months of the community like, what are you doing? So when PlayStation finally allowed crossplay, it seemed like they were listening to the community. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and, and, the crazy thing that it, yeah. it had nothing to do. We had nothing to do with no. that decision. <laughs> as much as we'd love to believe that, you know, we rallied together. We we made this happen. No, it wasn't about us. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. you're so right. Epic, Epic <laughs> forked up the dollars. You know, yeah. we we just kind of screamed into the void for a little bit. <laughs> well, it's kind of funny because we even talked about it in, in the previous topic. Like, Epic and Fortnite are the only ones capable of making moves like this. Uh, I mean, I even want to just pull up the quote that came out of the, this piece of evidence and um, that, you know, the Epic wrote to uh, Sony uh, Geo Corsi at the time and said, I quote, I can't think of a scenario where Epic doesn't get what we want. That possibility went out the door when pl Fortnite became the biggest game on PlayStation, end quote. Yep. Like, that's true. Yeah. Yep. Like, how can you say no to Fortnite and Epic after all the success it's seen? Yeah, and, and people people forget too that Fortnite was one of the only free to play titles that you could play without Xbox Live up until this year. People forget that it was just this year that Xbox made the decision mm -hmm. of like, oh, you don't need Xbox Live to play these free to play games anymore. Right. For for that to happen, for Xbox to to lower that barrier last year or to when Fortnite uh, came out. And then for PlayStation up until, you know, last year to be like, no, nah, we don't care about cross play. Like, yeah, we, we've got it free to play, but like, we're not going to do that. They Sony's not worried about playing nice. And these documents really show that. And Camille, you're so right. It's like we like to think that we have all this choice and all this power, but we really don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> they're still just we're just like the little birds and we're they're just feeding us all the food you know all the games all the stuff they make the decisions on when we're fed we are just yeah. you know we're just taking it in yeah when, when it comes to these massive massive deals you know when it comes to something like crossplay, which is like almost a tectonic shift in gaming and like the status quo that is always going to be dealt with by the by the big wigs you know we're <laughs> always going to be the little fish um, but there are plenty of things, plenty of examples where, you know, enough people talk about something and make it happen. But this is just this. This was never one of those things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah from a from a consumer standpoint, like I totally understand being bummed out when Sony was so bullish about not implementing Frostplay in a lot of their games and everything. But I mean, looking at the the evidence that came out of this trial, I kind of do understand their their stance on it from a business perspective I was of like, to say, yeah. Like they they said, um, oh, of course, he replied to the email. And I brought up the, the quote as well. It says, as, quote, as you know, many companies are exploring this idea uh, referring to uh, cross play and not a single one of them can explain how cross console play improves the PlayStation business. End quote. And it makes sense. Like if you're playing on Xbox and you purchase like a microtransaction, Sony's not getting any of that. Well, I, so yeah. how does that? And you're right, right? It's a show of the time, right? Yeah. And how big that Fortnite crossplay idea was because there was right. there was nothing like that. Like we didn't yeah. have that. Um and it's completely changed gaming that small what seems like a small decision just to open up crossplay completely changed how changes how we game today. Um right? So I think it's reflective of the time and what pretty much Epic was saying Craner, he was saying that you know in order for this deal to happen, it would improve, um, increase player engagement and mm -hmm. likely lead to increased revenue. So it's like you see this uphill battle that Epic really had to make. And I'm pretty sure they had to make the same arguments to Microsoft as well. Probably just not whole, you know, for that amount of time, that length of time, you know, Microsoft was more right. willing to do it because they they need something to kind of give their consoles that advantage advantage right um but yeah. it just shows that you know i think people question why is fortnite so big you know they're sick of fortnite they're sick of like epic they've earned that they they've made these partnerships with platforms you know um to have their game accessible when no one else was doing that mm -hmm. yeah and I this is a little bit of a little bit of a transition, but not quite. 
Fortnite, and we've talked about this on the show before, is becoming less of a game and more of an experience. And we yeah. saw that happen with Roblox, where now they're defining it not as a game, but as an experience. Because I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Roblox, but mm -hmm. you basically load into the game, and then there's a bunch of other mini games and levels and worlds that you can choose from. Um, and that is going to be big too because we've seen fortnite put this amazing effort in to kind of be bigger than itself right all these celebrities and these partnerships marvel dc like just everything and for fortnite to kind of break that barrier and apple to roll with it really proves that apple is kind of not i don't want to say they're ready for anything that epic has to throw at them but they're well prepared uh, even if they're not really into the the gaming world um per se they they know that fortnite is going to kind of transcend gaming eventually if it hasn't already and that's something that is kind of we could see other games, especially Modern Warfare. They've kind of started with that, uh, kind of take after that model. And Steve, you brought up, you know, kind of like the Sony documents. There was a line where they kind of put a handcuff uh, on their partners where they're saying that if Sony or if the player base on PlayStation is higher than any other platform, but microtransactions are lower than what was expected or agreed upon that company whoever has the game has to pay sony or playstation a, a certain percentage and, and that's so weird to me I, what do you guys think about that well it, it, i want to go back to like what steve was saying it, at the end of the day it's business right and i mm -hmm. feel like how these conversations are having is like or you know how they kind of go is playstation their their ideology it seems like is all about we are kind of like a, a platform that is of the gaming elite. We offer these great titles where we have a long history of satisfying our user base. Mm -hmm. Why should we have you on our platform? Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. How do you fit in? Um, and at the end of the day, like I'm thinking of pitching, you know, business deals and pitching. That is kind of how it works. Right. Mm -hmm. Like their their value is being PlayStation, that name and also being, you know, having all those games accessible. They if they're going to make a big deal like this, they don't necessarily just mean, yeah, we they kind of know it's going to work like they don't have to think twice about it. They know it's going to work. But how is it going to elevate their brand? Right. Um, at the yeah. end of the day, it's similar. It's similar yeah. a little bit, uh, maybe not to a T, but it's similar if you look at something like the deal between Sony and Disney when it comes to Spider-Man. Uh, mm -hmm. Disney is taking a, a lot of money out of that deal, but that's because at the end of the day, Sony needs Disney to yes. keep that franchise alive, not the other way around. If Disney wanted to get Spider-Man out of there and exit and just continue to do their thing, they'll continue to make a boatload of money. I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy is a massive franchise off an IP that is so brand new. And now everyone's so excited for the third one. They're introducing a ton of new characters that I'm sure are going to be massive box office successes. So you look at it in the same light, you know, PlayStation is just huge. Everyone has a PlayStation. Mm -hmm. Everyone loves PlayStation games. They pretty much don't miss and haven't for the last like seven years. So when it comes to like crossplay, it'll have to be something that they're going to be like, Hey, well, how does this benefit us? Not how are we going to benefit mm -hmm. you? Yeah. yeah. And the thing and is, to that, sorry, uh, to that, oh, no, um, that's why PlayStation secur secured Insomniac. Because they knew yeah. Disney was super yep. happy about how Spider-Man was. And in order mm -hmm. to make sure Spider-Man stays with PlayStation, you secure the studio. It's all yep. just business dealings at yep. the end of the day. Yep. And I'm trying to think to like... 2018 yes fortnite was huge but at the same time playstation already had fortnite mm -hmm. right yeah so yeah. it's and not like they didn't have the game it's just why would why would we even that's more the argument why would we open that up when we are in the business of making more money for playstation and we are already making money off your game on our platform right and so i think that that shows the the big difference between PlayStation and the Xbox brand where PlayStation is that walled garden saying, well, you're not going to affect us. You're not going to affect the ecosystem. You're not bringing anything to the table for us. So go away, basically. And Xbox is like, we don't have anything on the table to begin with. 
with with all due respect to xbox so why don't we approach this in a different fashion and say okay we're coming out very pro-consumer we're we have our hat in hand and saying okay we want more people in our ecosystem play with your switch friends or on on pc everyone's invited to the this party it's, it's a very different um you know attempt at, at reaching out to to the ecosystems and i think it's very fascinating but it definitely shows that that distinct nature of like sony has that that dominant force in the industry so they're approaching it in a very you know bullish manner where they were they're allowed to 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 some extent i i mean yeah it's not as pro-consumer as say like microsoft's attempt at it but they earned that right Mm-hmm. Yeah, and people and people criticize Jim Ryan a lot because he is very business oriented. Mm-hmm. He's he's very you know uh, kind of what you would expect from a CEO. Right. But uh, it's like Sean Layden had already said that AAA development, like consistent AAA development, is not going to be sustainable forever. Whether you like it or not, like free to play is going to take over. And I think that Sony knows that and that they're trying to strong arm for as long as they can before it's too late. Because mm-hmm. I think once we come in the aftermath, like maybe two, three years after this, we you know, we get the final decision. I think that we're gonna have to see Sony start to change their ways uh and kind of integrate a, a more consumer friendly because if they're going to go after Apple, who's to say that they can't go after Sony? Because even if, if they swing and miss at Apple, right, there is still a chance that they can try to limit uh, not. And I don't want to say that like Sony ha- or PlayStation has like anti or it has some like trust issues and that they have some issues with being more accessible. Mm-hmm. Um, but they are that premium kind of place, like you said. And I don't think that it's going to sustain them for as long as they think. I, I really, really don't think that I, Sony's going to be able. Yeah, I, I think that Sony's going to focus on a couple big titles every year, and then they're going to have to start giving way to some of these. Not just like Xbox is doing with like acquiring yeah. studios and, mm-hmm. and putting them in the Xbox Game Pass, but really starting to choose a few titles that are kind of that they need to have open and accessible to everybody. Right? You got Fortnite, mm-hmm. got Warzone got apex and maybe you add a couple others into that stable and they give them not necessarily the keys to the castle but they are give them more leniency in terms of microtransaction and accessibility than some of these other titles i think that sony is still going to strong arm a lot of other companies but i think sony is starting to get to the point where they can't strong arm everybody it's uh-huh. not going to be a viable tactic for long i mean steve you said you disagree steve and camille you said you disagree yeah uh-huh. I- I just think I just disagree just based on, you know, what works for PlayStation until they see that that shift in the paradigm where maybe Xbox or even Nintendo gets the upper hand. I think they're just going to roll out their the same thing. They they don't need to change anything. Mm-hmm. I think. With, my, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's I agree not with time Steve. For them to be I think it's the red panic button. And, no. and that's the thing. I agree. Yeah. I don't think it's time for them to hit the red pan- panic button. They're still making money. Their console that's not even you know, people can't even pick up their latest console, but it's still outselling every other console. Um, That just shows that they're still doing what's right for them. And, you know, if placed if this even, you know, this court case and the evidence that we see coming out of how PlayStation does their dealings um, is any evidence to show how their business dealings will continue this completely supports the fact that they're not making any changes because they don't have to they they don't have to do that even looking after crossplay being you know accessible for fortnite on playstation you look at the marketing after that deal they treated it like it was nothing <laughs> they were just like yeah. yeah we did that it's whatever they I, <laughs> playstation has a they so, have a history of letting their hubris get to them though that's we true. tried with the playstation 3 yep. like sony and playstation are not immune to this i like no, they and, have let their hubris get to them before and i think that they're on top right now mm-hmm. but i i think three to five years down the line we start seeing them have to dial back on, on some of these like you know big boy uh kind of moves that they're trying to make i think, I think when we see them i think what will be the the point for them the tipping point of yes we need to change something is when they release a console that does not sell and when they release like two or three of the top uh triple a games like whether it's god of war um or whatever is going to replace uncharted and they do not sell 
that's when they're like, okay, yeah, we need to change something um, because our formula is not working. And then mm -hmm. we'll also see probably that Jim, Jim will be gone, a new yeah. CEO <laughs> in, right? They'll do a whole shift. Yeah, I mean, and PlayStation announced that they have 25 non-AAA games in development currently, too. But that was so, after the news yeah. that they were strongholding these small developer studios to work on their AAA games. So I, I, it's I, a toss-up. I honestly think that is way too hard to predict because the market changes all the time and it, it's just too hard. But I do think that the only the first indication that Sony might have to change its its uh, platform as, as it currently stands is if Xbox can finally start delivering games of the caliber that PlayStation yes. does. That's the only time You're right. until then That's it. Play, PlayStation doesn't have a thing to worry about because as, as much as Xbox, in my opinion, really nails that pro consumer messaging and narrative, it doesn't matter unless they have games. Mm -hmm. So until no, they sure. start coming out with tens one after another that everyone can get behind, PlayStation doesn't have to do anything. Well, yeah. other yeah. than, we you know, Gears Halo and Halo, right? Like, yeah. what is their AAA exclusive title? And, you know, it comes down, like, I know previously we've had conversations of ex exclusivity is still a thing. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it still is. Because, yeah. like we talked about, when you're pitching, what makes you special? Every company needs that, right? And yeah. they're going to look at the games that they offer. Now, we'll see the the studios that they, they acquired, if that will help make them special in terms of those AAA titles and if they could really bring, comp bring, oh, sorry, bring competition to PlayStation. Um, but I think you're right, Steve. That's probably the tipping point for them, and we won't know until then. Yeah, and Steve, I mean... How is uh, how's Xbox doing on consoles? <laughs> well, we'll get to that. Like we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, we get to that later. Right. Later, yeah, yeah. but we're gonna take a quick break uh, because we talked a lot, and I, I need some more water. So we'll take a quick break, and we'll be right back. <laughs> 